Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, mm -hmm. relax, and take a look at all the fun things going on in Linux and open source in our world, things we find interesting. How's everyone doing? I'm Vince Stone, not the network, not to be confused with that. <laughs> uh, we do have Jill Bryant uh, <laughs> and um, Pedro Mateus and everyone at home joining us live, being beautiful, because it's another Aww. great day for Linux, everyone, you know it. Hey, um... We've had a lot going on since last week, you know, I've been yeah. playing around. <laughs> we are on Twitch, like Yay. mainly because of quality. Isn't that kind of weird, Pedro? We've had like a progression like then yeah. YouTube got better. <laughs> and now Twitch is like, uh -huh. no, we have the best quality now. And we don't understand brand loyalty, which is a good thing for you at home. Mm -hmm. But yeah, <laughs> you just wanna... get the best quality thing. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. man. Um, I did answer because I know Mike like, like, hey, man, what about YouTube? And this thing, I'm like, don't worry, the produced versions of everything we do, you know, that have been cleaned up and they're still going to show up on um, YouTube's. No issues there, but Twitch. Now we're going to mm. work on that onboarding process because we did the uh, Linux Gamecast Weekly. For like and you know mm -hmm. we we started that show for ten minutes We're like hey you can be an affiliate now I'm like all right let's that's a process <laughs> y'all need to sort that out but <laughs> if you watch Pedro's stream that's a gear Pedro put the notifications code and you were almost done playing your open moral win and yeah <laughs> somebody sent you bits that was awesome. <laughs> And it was the sound. It was the sound of it. It's like, what the hell's going on? And I see something moving in the OBS when it's like, oh, uh -huh. bits. Thank you. <laughs> I got to Yay. hear Pedro cheer for bits, and that made it Yay. all worth it because I thought it <laughs> hilarious. Dance monkeys dance. That was dance. awesome. <laughs> Jill, what's new with you, man? Oh, boy. Well, I had a great time again on Big Daddy Linux Live European Edition last Saturday. That's always a lot of fun. And I'm actually really looking forward to being interviewed on Very Good Entertainment this Saturday with two of my favorite podcasters, our very own Linda Tepler, Sorceress, uh, uh, Sorceress Zero in chat, and Lola Larissi. So I'm really excited about that and and uh just looking forward to chatting with them it's gonna be a lot of fun <laughs> right on pedro <laughs> give me the boot update baby it's still no boots uh it, it hasn't been the four weeks that they uh said uh in their last email so it's probably going to be in october for the look of things well no. in the meantime i do have the uh rx 570 amd gpu arriving tomorrow supposedly so yeah, that 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 will be nice <laughs> to play around with. Oh, I guess I want to plug this thing Fine. too. Um, I got one of these. Oh. They're neat. They're yes. cheap. They're like sixty bucks, but be warned that they're. You, know, you can see that the, the, there's no English in the instructions or anything like that. These are imported directly from Japan, and they're huge in Japan. <laughs> Good trackball. Still That's learning awesome. how to use it. It's brilliant. So yeah, like I get. Till the end of this month, anything that just, just radically gets cocked up during a show, I'm like, yeah, trackball. <laughs> like, but you knocked yeah. over the monitor. <laughs> trackball did it, and it wasn't. <laughs> uh... <laughs> it was trying to run away. I had to catch it. <laughs> Dude, so you're getting that new AMD card, and, well, you don't really have to worry about it, but if you had like a 5700 XT or something like that, you might be thinking, how how use and well 5.3 we're talking about kernel 5.3 is out and kind of the big thing here is it includes support for the amd navi gpus yeah. awesome mm -hmm. now it does also support which is like the um, zao zin x86 cpu and there's some stuff over there and but that's that's like the big feature that i think a lot of people were like hey that's kind of neat however um Gotta be honest, I was like just reading through like the bug reports leading up to this release. It technically works, but it's not completely 100% baked. Uh, there's still reports of it mm -hmm. freezing, get some bad idle temps. Of course, a lot of people are like, well, it's got bad idle temps on Windows too, so don't worry about that. And stuff like that. But hey, isn't that kind of like a, a fun, fantastic world where uh, just plug it in, go? Yeah. yeah. That, Amazing. Th that is the Linux world. That's the dream, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> yeah. The latest and greatest plug and play. 
Awesome. Jill? Yeah. So what's really awesome also is Linux 5.3 added more support for ARM SOCs, including from MediaTek and AM Logic. And they also added support for the audio connexent codec driver. Oh, thank goodness. Mm. I have some thin clients back there that are going to be very happy in some old laptops. <laughs> so that was awesome. That was one of the that was one of the last audio chipsets that didn't have support for Linux. <laughs> so now it does. Yep. And also 16 millions of new IPv4 addresses in the 0.0.0 slash 8 range are now available. So that's really good. <laughs> Very good. I mean, if they're opening <laughs> basically the zero range. Yes. We're running out. <laughs> yeah, we're actually we are. running out of IPv4s now. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually surprised uh, but, by now we're not IPv6 on everything. Yeah. But. <laughs> It'll now, happen eventually. Aren't the, maybe I'm wrong here, but aren't, aren't those uh, Zaoxin or Zaozin or however you say it, uh, x86 <laughs> CPUs, aren't just aren't those just AMD CPUs, but targeted specifically for the Chinese market? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think those are the ones. Yeah, you those are the ones that are... You they would need, you know, uh, all that much support, but... All right. <laughs> Good to have them. <laughs> Don't worry. Yes. I, I've been told for the past decade that we're running out of IPv4 block, and we're not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I set this everything up on IPv6 for the internet because mm -hmm. I felt like it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's pretty much it. <laughs> However, I mean, if you get a mobile device, it's IPv6. Yes. Oh, yeah. If you're on the 3G network, you, you kind of have to. <laughs> so, uh, Acer did a good. Yes. The more the merrier. The... Oh, it's it's awesome. Uh, thanks to the great work of Richard Hughes, Acer joins the Linux vendor firmware service. Yay! That Yay! Was one of those... <laughs> I used to have one of those laptops. <laughs> oh, you did that really? exact one? That's yeah. awesome. Uh, it, it was the one that I had for uh, my job in Portugal. Mm-hmm. One of them. <laughs> oh, okay, because cool. I was about to ask you on purpose, and I was like, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> cheap laptop. It's like, okay, all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is uh, the Acer Aspire A315. Um, that firmware is now available with more models, of course, to follow soon. You know, hopefully we'll have the whole Acer line on there, and it looks like that's going to happen. And, you know, I'm just amazed because this is really an exciting time to be in Linux because I never thought this would happen just a few years ago. It just it's amazing that we have firmware updating now on Linux. Yeah. <laughs> Strange times, it's... Please, man. I'm just going yeah. to say that because that has never really uh, 20 plus years of using Linux is like, well, hope that firmware is good. Um and we're talking mm -hmm. about hard drives, video cards, and stuff like that, because option two was like, well, let's see if we can do it through a VM, maybe? Which, mm -hmm. don't. Don't do that. Be, having the option to update firmware, like, uh, I downloaded the uh, firmware updater just to see what I could get a hold to. And then it's like all the uh, NVMe drives and SSDs in the system. And it's like, wow, that's updatable. Mm -hmm. Don't it's trust amazing. it enough to do it. <laughs> no, <laughs> especially with like SSDs that may or may not contain sensitive data. D d no, <laughs> but yeah, Acer is like the king or the queen of um, cheap laptops because even their higher end models. Okay, admittedly, they do have some really stupidly expensive they ones. They got some uh, premium stuff. That's <laughs> nice, yeah, but yeah. it's also yeah, they, expensive. Yeah, mm. but like. For the same specs, usually the Acer laptop tends to be the cheaper choice. Uh, so, yeah, it makes a lot of sense that people end up buying Acer laptops. And they're, um, for most people, laptops tend to be their introduction to the world of Linux. So this yeah. is very nice to see. Mm -hmm. Very nice indeed. I think that's good. More and more and more. Just, yeah. 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 <laughs> more. <laughs> All oh, right. Yeah. Uh, on that topic. Yeah, speaking, so speaking of, cheap of laptops. laptops. <laughs> yeah, speaking of laptops, <laughs> Huawei is now selling the Matebook 13, 14, and X Pro at Vmall, their e-commerce marketplace in China. 
um, with Deep in Linux pre-installed, like we have been talking about. And this is really great because this is despite concerns of, of hey, wa well, stopping production on the PC on their PC OEM market because of U.S. sanctions. And actually, to me, I think the trade blacklisting of Huawei by the U.S. government will be good for the development of Linux on their laptops because they may lose their Microsoft Windows licenses, which actually would be a good thing. <laughs> That's making deep in Linux that much better. <laughs> so and, and putting Linux into the hands of more people because Huawei, they're like the, the, the second or third top in the world for devices. So this is really yeah. significant. Yeah. They make I, everything. Yeah, they make everything. <laughs> and I know their laptops, they're well loved by the community because they, they look like mm -hmm. MacBooks, you know, and um, they're really uh, Microsoft thin, they're Surface. really light. Yeah, they're yeah. like uh, cheap Ultrabooks. Yeah. Which people are mm -hmm. dying to get. So, yeah. <laughs> cheap Ultrabooks. Yeah. So, a netbook on steroids? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But do do you think I would see better or worse performance than a hundred and seventy nine dollar um, Acer refurbished Chrome OS tablet? Uh, mm. I think the Huawei laptop would be better. Okay. Yeah. Just because the chip on the tablet has to be really low power to you know not burn your hands. Well, it's not chip. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> That's but neat, yeah, man. no, um, they're using Deepin and yeah, time to put your tinfoil hats on kids nope. because uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, if there was ever a reason and Deepin has been accused many times of containing spyware because they had a single HTTP link for the CNZZ um, data aggregator network that they have in China. It's like, oh, it's spyware. It's like uh, they're <gasps> getting just telemetry data? All right, fine, whatever. Um, so mm -hmm. if there was ever a reason to scrutinize their code, them working with Huawei, that was probably the time to do it. Mm. Actual, actually go in and see what they're doing exactly. Then well, heads off. <laughs> giving, yes. giving all the options <laughs> that we have right girl. there, that <laughs> is. <laughs> Do you think there's a Windows 10 user watching right now going, yeah, because you're, you're being spied on? Oh, you know there are. Uh, I mean, unironically yeah. saying that. <laughs> <laughs> you know there are. <laughs> LGC cares. Cares. <laughs> All right. What do we got up next? Up next. Well, uh, continuing from the mates, but not the mate laptops. This is, um, this comes from Wimpy uh, and the Linux mate, uh, the... Ubuntu Mate uh, Linux distro, which had a little tool uh, that was on, just an you, indicator. You know if you, you were setting this up, I, I would be tempted. And, uh, do you hear me, one press? Just make it red. Just call, give somebody an aneurysm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, they'll, they've always had that little uh, indicator uh, that would let you switch between uh, the Intel graphics and the NVIDIA graphics. Uh, like full-on NVIDIA graphics to render everything or just use the Intel for power savings. But now uh, the Mate Optimus uh, applet has been improved uh, with the last couple of versions, which uh, adds one extra option, which for those of you who have used Bumblebee in the past may look very similar because uh, it's called NVIDIA On Demand. And what it does is it basically runs everything mm -hmm. like just the basic window rendering, browsers, what have you. That's all done on the Intel um, chip, but the NVIDIA card is powered on and just waiting for you to tell it's like, oh, there's a game coming. <laughs> done. <laughs> mm. So yeah, it's, it's basically, it's not mm -hmm. quite there yet because it still has the same, um, basically the exact same um, problem that, well, it's not really a problem, it's just a limitation that, uh, Bubblebee has, which is the NVIDIA card is still powered on. It may not be using much and it may be in a low power state, but it is still draining power, just waiting for something to happen while uh, the Optimus technology is supposed to let you power it off and power it on as it's necessary. So that that's still a thing. 
<laughs> yeah, and it's really great also because it also it does support GNOME Shell, XFCE, Budgie, and the Cinnamon desktops, which is yeah, wonderful. Any so GTK it's not things. just yeah, <laughs> any GTK, so it doesn't have to be mate. And thanks again to Martin Wimpress Wimpy for all his wonderful work on this. And I, I wanted to quote uh, someone in our chat. Um, Adrian said in chat, the Optimus support in Mate 19.10 is amazing. My life has now changed. So yeah, it, <laughs> that's it works, awesome. Uh, like out of the box, Ubuntu Mate was always great uh -huh. if you had an Optimus yes. laptop because it would just immediately plop that there. It's like, oh, you have an NVIDIA card. Okay, you get to switch between those cards. Just log in and out. There, done. Yeah. <laughs> And now it's nice to have the GUI, so it's Solid great. Solid piece of kit, good work. <laughs> I'm digging it. Um, yep. Hey, maybe you don't like everything to work, you know, out of the box. <laughs> oh, Arch! <laughs> no, this is Arch! wonderful. This is... <laughs> <laughs> So this is uh, last week we talked about Manjaro becoming a professional project. And now after six months of development and hard work, we have Manjaro 18.1.0, uh, which just has been released. And in this version, you can choose LibreOffice or SoftMaker's FreeOffice 2018 during the install. And Manjaro 18.1 now includes support for flat packs and snap packages. And in doing that, they renamed the graphical package manager management system from FPacman to Bayou, B-A-U-H. I, I, I don't know what it's, how it's Bob? supposed to be pronounced. Bob, I guess. I can only, one can only assume. <laughs> <laughs> that that was done on a dare. It's like, hey man, yeah. like, you know what? F Pac Man, brilliant. It's gonna work with uh, snaps and flat packs. F Pac Man, easy to remember. And like, mm -hmm. you know what? Let's mess with everyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're gonna name it something that's like two letters off from a Stargate SG One villain. Come on. Uh, oh, there we go. <laughs> I will say this: that is, uh, you're gonna get the pop up because you, it was like two months ago. The internet lost its mind. They're like, oh, they're getting paid by um, free office the soft maker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which they weren't. They're like, no, it's another German company. We we're going to like work with it. So you're gonna get that pop up option, which I'm sure, but again, I don't understand Debian's guilty of this, Ubuntu's guilty of this, Fedora, why are you installing LibreOffice mm -hmm. by default? That That's a chunky critter, and <laughs> most people don't do To be fair, the they don't install, like, the full uh, 600 and something megabytes of uh, mm. LibreOffice. Uh -huh. They usually give you, like, Writer, Calc, and uh, Impress. So just a little bit of generally um, yes it's like half stuff, of it yeah. <laughs> yeah and it's really fun when it has some weird dependencies it's like okay i just want to remove this why do you want to take out half the system mm -hmm. yeah that's this really oh but the the system like the core package yeah. of the system is uh, lists that as a dependency why <laughs> not to knock on LibreOffice. if you need an office suite like that it's a thing. It's there. Yeah. It's just 2019 and even old man Vin does stuff online now because collaborative editing is the future. Mm -hmm. Yay. Steal my data, Google. Yeah. <laughs> um, Fedora 31, new beta mm -hmm. is out and it's got a couple of neat surprising features that I'm in. It does. And uh, yeah, they have uh, the availability is now there for uh, the 31 beta workstation, 31 beta server. And they also have like the popular variants. You get all the uh, different DE spins because Fedora is actually pretty good in providing you uh, with a spin for the widely used uh, desktop environments. Uh, they also have uh, Fedora 31 Beta Labs and Beta Arm. Uh, they do say that the Fedora, what is it, Core OS, uh, it's mm -hmm. it's in a preview state still, so. If you were looking to try like the uh, atomic update, uh, everything is containerized version of Fedora, gotta wait a little bit, just a bit. <laughs> so, how do you think this will run on my Pinium three? It won't. Why not? Not anymore. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> <laughs> Those uh, i six eight six R packages are well, they're going away. Mm -hmm. As well, the ISOs already went away uh, with the last couple of releases. It's just now they're getting rid of the i686 repo, but as we mentioned previously, 
multi-lib in the 64-bit uh, repo is still there. Yeah, definitely yeah. got to say that. RIP <laughs> i686, I don't remember the last I saw the, and uh, yeah, the IoT spin, that's going to be interesting. XFC 414, yay, best desktop. Um, maybe, I'm not running, I'm still on 412 because I run Debbie 10 now. Uh, QT Wayland by default, that's good, 100%. Mm -hmm. Firefox Wayland, brave. Um, <laughs> And GNOME 334, almost. It's like yeah. asterisks. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> Fun distribution. I think Fedora is an excellent mix of you really want to try the latest and greatest, but you also want to be reasonably assured that your computer's going to boot every time. Yeah, if you hit the power button, it still gets to a graphical environment. <laughs> That's kind of like the minimum. <laughs> you boot to a GUI? Yeah, Scrub. I'm one of those people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so speaking of fancy things, um, yes. maybe you have one of these keyboards with the oh fancy God, backlighting and whatnot. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> I would rather, I would rather um, go play it in traffic while jumping off a building before owning that. Yes. <laughs> it's a chunky boy. It's uh, It's got some heft to it. Uh, the Well, and maybe you'd like to be able to control the backlighting if, for some reason, your keyboard doesn't have, like, built-in firmware to control the backlighting. Uh, or maybe you want some more granular control about it. Well, a uh, fine person, what does he call himself, Glatz, created uh, KBD Lite, which is available on GitHub. There will be a link in the show notes, don't you worry. Uh, and he uh, is very mm -hmm. uh, keen on mentioning the fact that he's doing uh, this by the Unix philosophy of do one thing and do it well. And he, uh, there are no extraneous mm -hmm. dependencies. Basically, you just need, I guess, lib USB to be able to talk to the keyboard. Pedro, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't have a blink button. I've looked. <laughs> I mean, you don't get to talk. You have one of those weird keyboards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ben doesn't like the RGB goodness. <laughs> a system you had, requirement like, I look for in a keyboard is, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I want to be able to type with a hangover, A. <laughs> I can do that on this one. Yeah, I but, just don't look yeah. down. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to be like, shut up, keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. Um, also, blinking is not a requirement for my keyboard. I understand backlit. Um, I'm down with that. And this is a very mm -hmm. useful utility, If which I was unaware. I've, I don't know if I've ever seen a... Of course, you can get a backlit keyboard for nothing now that didn't have mm -hmm. a hardware adjustable... Yeah, the, it's usually built into the keyboard firmware yeah. itself. You just go like mm -hmm. FN, tick, 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 done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right on. But right yeah, on. this is good <laughs> yeah. in the way that it doesn't have any extraneous dependencies. Yeah. That's very nice. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and the developer, Juan K Kuzmar, you know, that's what he was talking about, is how he wanted, he wrote he wrote a program because he wanted simplicity and, and not all those dependencies. Mm -hmm. So that was just to control brightness on a keyboard. So that makes sense. And it looks like a very yeah. sweet little, little program. <laughs> I'm down with that. You can set it off. <laughs> yes. <probably>. yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, we need to talk about this. Pine time. $25. Mm -hmm. Smartwatch. Companion for Linux Smart. Yeah, this is from Pine64 because stay tuned next week. Pine sucks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the folks at this is, where does this come from? Plug. The folks at Pine64 have been selling inexpensive Linux laptops ish. And it's a smartwatch. It's something that you can find on AliExpress for like eight pounds. And the plan is to get the community to shove some Linux into it. So for that 25 bucks, it's ARM embed running free RTOS. RTOS? That's the thing. Um, I don't know what I would expect from... All right, here we go. Let, let's back this up. <laughs> I don't wear a watch. I'm a hipster. If I'm going out with a watch, it's a pocket watch. Hold on. <laughs> Uh, this is how I go Pedro's out. <laughs> I just use my phone, so. 
is. So you carry a pocket watch too. Good. Yes, um. I do. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the only time I use a watch is at scale. I always have one on my bag. <laughs> so <laughs> the smart watches never like hit me. I remember when uh, you know Google Wear and them. I was like, but you got no. Uh, you got to charge it. Does it? Th there's not that killer app, and it's like, can you like shoot bees with it or something? I'm like, no. And I was like, oh, I'm not about some of that. I mean, I I see the point for most people because yeah. it's like it's a watch, and you can change the face of it and make it look all fancy. Uh, you can also get like um notifications to sync up. I've seen those people who use their watch. They like pick up a call and then talk to their watch, and and it's like. Uh, I too saw Knight Rider. I kind of want to do that. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I guess I'm just easily amused, I guess. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For 25 bucks? Why not? I mean, you know, yeah. even I might, you know, play around with this because it would be nice to have notifications on your watch instead of pulling out your phone all the time or your tablet. And I think this is cool because now you can live in the Pine 64 Linux ecosystem. You can have a Pinebook Pro laptop, Pine Tab tablet, Pine Phone, and now Pine Time Watch for all under $500. Isn't that awesome? Take that, Apple. <laughs> <laughs> I still want one of those uh, Pine Pro laptops. Uh, but I, mean, I, I, I yes. could buy I an like Android tablet cheap. and do stuff with it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Pine Tab, it's great as like a prototype thing, but yeah. This is what we it need needs to say a about bit Pine. More. Um, it's mm -hmm. an awesome project. Fully support them. Just know what you're getting. You know, you're, you're, mm -hmm. you're getting Tinkertron Plus. Mm -hmm. yes. Not, <laughs> we're going to roll these out in production. Because if you do that, send me the video or invite me. I'll come watch, record myself. <laughs> <laughs> That will be a thing. We get a little bit of news. We we get a, um, a small segment, if I can find it, called Microsoft Loves Linux. <laughs> it's yes. brilliant. Isn't that right, Sriracha? <laughs> yeah. Um, boom. <laughs> this week. Open sourcing uh... MSVC. Yeah, that's the thing. And you know what? The burning question on the minds of all business professionals. Pedro, will this help me play the video games? I guess it would help developers uh, yeah. move their video game building away from the Microsoft ecosystem and get those visual C bits on Linux. But I for wish, actually I, I playing really the games, wish, like, no. yeah, no. I love the QA. It's like, is there a catch? I, man, it's like firstborn. No. Mm. It's uh, Visual C. It's Microsoft's Visual C. It's yeah. avail. It's uh, being open sourced. So, yeah, that's Speaking great. Of the open Thanks, source, Microsoft. Man, I mean, it's going to be Apache 2.0, LLVM exemptions, and no, um, the STL isn't merging with libc. So, one one. Yeah, mm. you either use the Visual C or you use glibc. One. <laughs> strange moon universe are we in man i know i was just gonna say that then because i remember in college you know seeing all you know hundreds of workstations with uh microsoft visual and c plus plus and all the things and now they're open sourced I, what universe are we in <laughs> you know after microsoft uh, actually released the xfat patent i'm like okay all right yeah now yeah. I'm just waiting for the penny to drop. It's like, what's <laughs> going to happen? Because them open sourcing more stuff? All right, cool, thanks. But uh, what's happening? What is going to happen exactly? You're, you're not doing very good, man, because if when Microsoft does something, you get to like pick that field goal up. <laughs> Take it out of the ground and move it somewhere else. It's like, well, nah. Oh, no, no. See, my field goal was the XFAT patent. So now I'm just waiting. It's like, okay, what are you going to do now? <laughs> <laughs> you do have that and that, that's a very real thing because you're like, well, okay and then you're gonna do something dumb here it comes and this, yes. is, this all goes down to microsoft's uh, <laughs> management structure with the different teams pointing guns at each other that um is a very very real thing that's not much of an exaggeration they probably use something better than guns um but <laughs> they just throw windows 10 at each I, other i don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, this I forget who it was or so I was like, hey, well now do you think we'll end up with like a version of uh 
Windows that is going to have a Linux kernel, which, you know, this is something mm -hmm. we used to say in the mm -hmm. 90s. I'm like, why don't they just build an X server? Mm. <laughs> you know what? With Windows, it shouldn't, I would say, guarantee in the next 10 years, it's, it's going to be equivalent to Stadia. It's going to be a streaming service. I do. Mm -hmm. It's like, that doesn't make sense, old man Vin. Think about it. It does. Why do you think they're putting yeah. the money into learning? Microsoft's doing their own version of Stadia. If you get good at doing that, delivering a desktop experience, easy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe that'll be running Linux. That'll laugh. We'll win. Whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah. Just this is a strange times, man. Yes. <laughs> like I, I felt dirty for buying a Microsoft product, man. <laughs> I mean, it's just a peripheral, right? It is just, yeah. but yeah, that, that, that doesn't set well at night when you're trying to go to bed. I know. They are very well built, of course. <laughs> they, they are very well made, but yeah, it's, it is a little creepy a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, if you're wondering, their ergonomic keyboard and all that, just stick the dongle in and cut it on, you're good. No problem. Uh, mm -hmm. All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, we're going to take a minute to think about who makes this possible. How do we do that, Pedro? Do we, um, mm -hmm. do we, uh, let's see what we do. Uh, we, we, we should take up pottery. We should sell pottery. Oh, I was, uh, thinking of taking traditional, uh, folk dancing. Nope. Okay. Um, while, while doing pottery. That could, yeah. Listen. See, that, that, that could be our shtick. I've, I've already, <laughs> I've already accepted this is going to be messy no matter what we do. So. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's going to be clay flinging around all over the place. Clay. It's going to be brilliant. Hey, <laughs> if I can get this mouse to move in the right spot. If you'd like to support our clay experiments, you can do that by becoming one of the 113 and beautiful people making this show possible. This is a community experiment. We're entirely community funded. And if you would like to join that, mm -hmm. you can do that at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. We got a bunch of tiers. Uh, get access to the Discord. You get early access. I even made something for everyone. Check that out. Podcasting mm -hmm. on Linux, the Vin way, yeah. which is the wrong way, <laughs> only faster. <laughs> and I'm going to be following that up with a little thing for streaming because... No humble brag whatsoever. I, I do have a lot of experience setting up OBS and how you should set up your streaming rigs and stuff like that. So that's something that's going to be coming in the future. You do get our pre-pre-super shows in, and you can listen to that live Saturday if you want at 7.30. You're like, man, I like this nonsense. I'd like to join in. Hop in Discord, click that audio for the uh, creep shows, and we're in there. And uh, what else do we got? Uh, we got a wish zone. I mean, if you want to creep on the stuff we're planning on buying for the shows, that's the thing. You can do that. That's at linuxgamecast.com. You're like, no, that's a stupid thing. Vin, buy the other thing. Feel free. Send me a message because this is, this is our grocery list. This is stuff that we're going to buy. And if you have some thoughts on that, let us know. Pedro and Jill both have like wish mm -hmm. list of like filled with plushy toys and dancing <laughs> supplies. I don't know what dancing supplies are, but it's definitely a thing. You can check it out yourself 100%. <laughs> Put it in your face. Keep being awesome. And uh, that's that. That's awesome. No, and I guess uh, we should uh, take advantage of the shilling no, section and nope. thank Hoggle88 for the 20 bits. Much appreciated. Oh, we got 20 bits? Yeah. Yep. Yes, we did. Hoggle once again making those bits rain. Right. Right on. Neat. I I don't know what bits are, but we got them. It's brilliant. Um, we, got a new, we got a new follower too. Uh, no, to uh, Illyrian Killer was. Uh, oh, okay. Yesterday. Okay. People reading. All right. So let's get into a slice of pie mm. this week with rocks. I love rocks in my. Oh pie. yes, the rock pie. It's uh, the x86 uh, pie like that. Well, we have uh, mentioned in the past several times, and they were like a, a hundred bucks for the cheapest one. But this one, well, this one uh, comes in at a bit less uh, with the Atom X uh, 5Z8300 uh, Cherry Trail processor. And yeah, they're, they're expecting it to retail for around uh, $39 for the one gigabyte RAM uh, version. And then the prices increase as you add more RAM. So yeah, the price difference between the Rock Pi um, x86 and the um, Raspberry Pi, it's like very small at this point, which 
means you could have like the credit card size x86 computer for you to play around with if you don't mm. want to learn about the arm things and the price is not mm. terrible it's like even the um the four mm. gigabyte version of the uh, rock pi x model a is like 65 dollars yeah that's very nice <laughs> don't get me down with that when we're talking about you know x86 and that form factor a quad core yeah. one, it's I'd like to see what it's capable of. And it's in that price to like, all right, I'll just pick one. Make sure it's available. This is the reason I don't own a Raspberry mm. Pi 4 right now because they <laughs> sold out. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll just buy one. Now they're like, eh. <laughs> yeah, I do want one of those uh, Raspberry Pi 4s with the four gigs of you RAM, but <laughs> <Yes. live. laughs> where they're made. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to give, but they're sold well, out. That's the thing. You could they had them in stock at the store, which is next yeah. to your house. <laughs> they had it in stock. <laughs> the, every time I checked, baby, it was in stock. <laughs> I checked last week because it's like, okay, maybe I'll go. No, they're out of stock. <laughs> we were talking like six months ago, too. <laughs> ah, yeah, yes. when it came out. <laughs> See, Pedro's made it. He's got this thing in his head. He's like, I'm not going to that. He's like a child. He's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm petulant like that. He, you he are. Didn't want to spend an hour on the bus. That's why. <laughs> Aww. That's kind of brilliant. Um, if they're in stock and they roll out, I mean, quad core 1.4, I don't know exactly what you get away with doing it. My thought is like, could I replace what, not replace, but add another Optiplex, you know, WebRTC streaming box now? Yeah. Well, the advantage to this is also that it, because now you can run x86 apps uh, and a lot there's a lot of them that aren't available for ARM yet. So that would be a good use case for this. Mm-hmm. 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 It'd be fun. Don't listen to play with. I mean, the GPU side uh, integrated and it's like 500 megahertz. So, I, for mm -hmm. a chip that size, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that'll be a thing. All right, uh, everyone's favorite company, Oracle. Yeah. Yay, this is actually yes, really, really cool. Favorite. Yes. <laughs> so this is uh, the Oracle Raspberry Pi supercomputer has 1060 Raspberry Pis, 49 <laughs> custom printed Pi holders, 22 network switches, 18 USB power supplies, and lots and lots and lots of wiring. It is running Oracle Autonom Autonomous Linux and Java, of course, and it's being used to render selfies at the Oracle Open World event being held in San Francisco today and since Monday. And it, it does really look a bit like a TARDIS, and, um, but it was intended as a proof of concept that was created by Oracle as a way to learn fundamental cluster principles and just because it was cool. And guess what it's been using for? It's been being used for it as a giant selfie box <laughs> i mean i guess that's, that's one fun. way to make a raspberry pi cry you get it to run yes. java and yeah. uh, have it render your <laughs> selfie yeah. yes <laughs> it's powered by the tears of raspberries everywhere yes. <laughs> But this is really amazing. 1060 Raspberry Pis. That's awesome. I do think it squarely falls in the neat category. A lot neater if it wasn't from Oracle. Because oh, yeah. um, you have to think about, you know, Pi clusters, they're not practical when it comes to performance. They're not. But the novelty, yeah. you know, this is homebrew supercomputer project. It makes the learning experience worthwhile. Getting that set mm -hmm. up and running. You know, even, even if you're playing the home game. And, you know, as you said, I mean, it's basically set up as a demo because they announced autonomous Linux. I'm like, hey, we can do this mm -hmm. thing, too. We're Oracle. We love Linux, except for remember that time when we were financing Sco? Yay, we're Oracle. It, yes. <laughs> remember oh. all the times that we were actively trying to go after people for using Linux stuff? Yeah. <laughs> but... Um, it's Oracle, dude. I mean, like, we're not going to sell this. This is another thing because if they were, this would cost 10 times as much as any competitor mm -hmm. who was making that product. It would require you to sign a 10 year contract and maintenance agreement mm -hmm. that doesn't cover anything when you actually use it. <laughs> also, I may yeah. have dealt with Oracle <laughs> in my past life. Um, yes. I, um, yeah, that's cool. 
that's neat. It was surprisingly devoid of people around it, though. They're like, we're everywhere else. But then again, you're, you're at an Oracle <laughs> conference. You, yeah, I think like, just Raspberry Pis are not what people go to the Oracle no, conferences dude, for, yes, to be honest. Exactly. If, if you're on a plane to the Oracle conference, you're, you're questioning life decisions. Mm -hmm. It's like, are you getting paid to do that? Because if you had to pay to do that... Mm. Mm. Hey man, maybe Aww. you are getting paid to do stuff for the Oracle. We'd love to hear about it. Yes, uh, if you do have some interesting stories to share, you can go to LoixGameCast.com. You hit the contact button, make sure to pick uh, LWDW from the little show box, and fill out your name, your email, give us a subject, and your message, and we will be more than happy to feature it right here, right now. Tell us about things we <laughs> did wrong. Tell us about things we did right. Uh, tell us that Oracle rules. Uh, Aww, uh, or, yes. You know, don't. <laughs> tell us your horror <laughs> stories about uh, working with Oracle stuff. We're, we'll be more than happy. I know I will uh, to read okay, those well, right here. You might, you might need to go take a bio break and I'll give you a few. Okay. <laughs> I'm joking. Hey. We don't have that much time. We gotta get out. Yeah. <laughs> Coming up first okay. from Leo P. Talking about nice. Plex. We can do it. Maybe we can answer it. Yeah, this is a question. Mm -hmm. Yay. Can I get a recommendation for a Plex distribution? Per usual, the internet is unable to agree. No, not the internet. <laughs> On one, CentOS, CentOS 8 is about to drum. Leaning towards that. Recommendations? Question mark? Thanks. I, oh, come on. Don't think this. <laughs> uh use whatever you're comfortable with it mm -hmm. i mean you're just you just want a base to run plex off of do you know ubuntu use ubuntu do you know sent mm -hmm. use sent do you know manjaro or arch use those yeah yeah <laughs> i'm i'm running it on debian 10 so i got my plex server on debian 10 i love it <laughs> use what you know because if something goes yeah. wrong you're going to be the one who has to deal with it so Mm -hmm. Man, have you ever like asked somebody a question and they didn't give you one, like an answer? They're just like, "Oh, you know, it was whatever you want." Because yeah, that's why you're asking a question because you were totally non indecisive. Hey, okay. check this out, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> My Plex box runs Ubuntu eighteen oh four LTS. Why? Ten years. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be supported for 10 years. It's headless. You can probably get away with doing the server, but you get all your codec stuff there. You don't have to mess around with it. And you put it in the corner, set it, forget it. Don't bother with it. Yeah. If you don't want to worry about the codex, you want to use a very good choice. Yeah. That could be a thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, Debian would be a thing. Uh, just But then you have to worry about the codex. <laughs> you gotta worry about a lot no. more than the codex. <laughs> yeah. Well, just you just gotta make sure to compile in player, which I do on an every Debian box. That helps. No, a lot. you just enable the Debian multimedia <laughs> repository and you're done. Oh yeah, but I like to compile my in player. You know, I, I like to get stuff done. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So uh, this one is about Ven's little Nikon hack. And uh, Ven, how did you manage to remove the autofocus point? Like the little square thingy. Uh, I follow the same method, but I'm still stuck at removing that rectangle. Uh, Atharva. Atharva right. is asking how to get rid of that. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. So not necessarily Linux specific, but I just wanted to throw this in here because this question that was asked, and it's like, hey man, you took a hair, you know, it's showing off that sometimes the best hacks are the dumb ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and instead of dumping the BIOS and seeing if I could figure out what bit to flip to keep that half shutter press, I was like, I just put a hair tire on it. Yeah, it works. And I, I've now upgraded the technology to zip ties. But uh, <laughs> How did I get rid of, because he's talking about like the on-screen display, it's got the overlay stuff. How did I get rid of that? Um, let me tell you, I got rid of that. I read the manual. Because ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> that's going to do it. We got to get out of here. Bye, everyone. We love you. That was a bit of an anti-climax. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Ha <laughs> <laughs>
Oh yeah, I'm going to tell you exactly how you get rid of that. Read the manual. <laughs> Reminds me of the Fedora forums back in the day, or RTFM. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so yeah, Arthur is with me on that one. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't going to say that, but yeah. It's RTFM. <laughs> <laughs> if you've not read far enough into the manual and the absolute basics of how to control the camera, you don't need to know how to do it that anything else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like taking the time to type out. You might as well say, would you Google this for me? Mm -hmm. no. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to Google. <laughs> you know, if you say that, people might actually help you. Hey, Frank. Bye, Frank. <laughs> Scared him off. <laughs> Frank went into space. Frank! Blast <laughs> off into space, our Frank. <laughs> he's he's not happy being in Ben's house right now. 